Hiya! Welcome to episode two. I don't like saying episode. To number two. <laughs> Epi- of the old facade cast, right? Uh, I've got to yes. get on my soapbox a little bit. Episodes to me, uh, serial drama type things, you know, for fictional yes. things. I, I know we, I know it technically can class non fiction documentaries and stuff, but. For me, if you're doing an episode of something, then you're doing something where there's actors and things. Anyway. Storytelling. Right. <laughs> anyway, I had to get that off my chest. Hello, everybody, and welcome to number two, part two, edition two of the old Sodcast. I'm Jimmy Barnes, obviously, and with me is my co-host. I nearly called him my glamorous co-host then. <laughs> Like, That's that right, I'll take it. Century. <laughs> it's Jason Clow at Not Suitable for Mom, are you, Jason? How are you? Oh, yeah, all good, mate. Ready and set, ready and raring to go. This should be quite fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to talking about what we're going to be talking about today, which, if those of you don't know, it is about our memories and maybe some general thoughts about the various physical music formats that we have and maybe even some that we haven't used in the um, over the years. So, um, Jason, you had a good weekend. Um, you, Very um, good, yep. yep. Good, good. Um, me and Jason were discussing future plans for the Sodcast um, just before we went live, but um, we'll leave those as uh, a bit of a surprise for you if you're going to join us. Um, every fortnight and uh, maybe even uh, for a special edition at some point but uh, uh, we'll see all right so um yeah uh, we might as well get started really haven't we um okay, yep. talk is in the chat hi richard thanks for coming in mate um so uh i think i want to start with what was certainly i would i think i would call it my favorite music format when I was younger, um, so it's always going to hold. It's certainly the one that I use use the most. I think it's the one pretty much everyone uses the most. I want to talk about audio cassettes, Jason. Yep, yep, yep. No, I, yeah, great fun with audio set, uh, cassette. Not just from the point of view of playing stuff, but um, what you were able to do with a cassette player, basically. Yeah, like, you know, cassette recorder. Mm. What I know about the cassette, it was invented by a team headed by, um, and I've forgotten his name, so that's good, uh, <laughs> headed by uh, like an engineer type person yeah. at Philips in the Netherlands in 1960, I think. Um, they, Philips and then some other companies, it was um, mainly European, but obviously the Japanese also were trying stuff out yeah, yeah. in the late 50s. You know, various tape formats had come out. And had been trialed and prototyped, and some had come out to the you know consumer market, but in the late fifties, going into the early sixties. But the compact cassette, as it was called originally, um, was only really intended to be a, a dictation format uh, originally. Jason, yeah. it wasn't really till Dolby noise reduction started becoming yeah. more of a standard in hi-fi. And of course, in in the recording industry itself in the 1970s, whereas people actually looked at this dictation format that had been around for probably over a decade at that point, and thought, actually, you know what, we can get music sounding pretty good on here. Yeah. And I've I've had some. I remember having some tapes, um, both pre-recorded ones that I bought, and then ones that I'd recorded myself, and and they sounded great. You know. They did, yeah. Um. I, because I got I got mine. Oh, cracky! I must have been seven, something like that. Maybe, maybe even even younger. Um, I had a little. I think it was a Philips cassette recorder, and yeah, the one where you had the, the big button at the bottom. You had to physically push up to put the head up, and yeah. then you could also to rewind in that. You had to hold the head in a set direction. In order to get it to do the rewind or fast forward, it wasn't like mm. oh, you press a button and it does it for you. You had to physically hold it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why I had not not particularly great sound quality at the time, but as you say, the I think the tape types made up for that. 
Yeah. Well, you have you have Chrome and all the rest of it. Yeah, that, you have, that, you have that, Type that. One, which was ferric, which was kind of your bog standard cheapest option. Yeah. Type two was chrome. There was a type three that didn't really do anything, like no one really bothered, which was a which was ferro chrome. Ah, and yes. Then, and then you had type four, which I don't think I'd ever used. I'm not sure I used type three either. I probably never did. Um, which was metal tape, of course, type four, which was expensive. Don't, and yeah, I don't think so. For... Yeah, you had to for type four or metal tape. You had to have. Um, you had to have a very powerful sort of hi-fi and record recording because it, it needed yeah. a strong, it needed a stronger signal. Well, and I think basically more electricity pumping through mm -hmm. to record onto the metal tape. I think even my dad's because my dad got a, a big stereo hi-fi. Mm. Um, I'm trying to remember who it was by now. I really can't remember for the life of me. Um, anyway, it was called a high. It was called a high fidelity system, right? And had you know it had your stereo, your radio, your turntable, um, you know your cassette player, all the rest of it. And um, I remember using that one quite a lot for you know initially before I got my own to play tapes. And um, this was semi coming off the back of reel to reel as well. Mm. Well, yeah, because we it was sort of a, the next progression on, wasn't it? Really. Well, yes and yes and no. Like I say. It, the compact cassette it has its similarities with reel to reel. I mean, certainly if you look at how the um, the tape is spooled inside yeah. the, inside your cassette yeah. shell or your cartridge, as um, I think was more of an American term, but they called it like a cassette cartridge. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, tape cartridge for for a while, but then it gets confusing when you sort of you know because for us cartridge means a different sort of format, but. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. I. Th I think certainly with home recording, you're right. I. I think sort of with the invention of the compact cassette. I mean, you know, reel to reel. Still, I would say. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we're talking 1960, the year Philips brings the first compact set out, then <coughs> I would say reel to reel still had probably a good 10 years, maybe getting on 15 as as a fairly popular. Um, pre-recorded and home recording. Film. Yeah, I think it was the main, the main, the home, home you know, doing your own never, ones. It was never number one ahead of vinyl, obviously. No, no, in definitely not. In the 1960s no. or 70s, because vinyl was cheaper. You yeah, know, exactly. And there was singles and everything as well, and re you know, and reel-to-reel -reel equipment was always expensive. But I mean, we can we can get onto that in a bit. But um, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, four four types of tape. I think you know, like for certainly. Me and my family, the standard one we'd always get would be the Type One Ferric, and I know my yeah. dad's Sony Hi-Fi. It did have Dolby on it, actually, Dolby noise reduction for re you know recording off the radio or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, I didn't really understand it when I was younger, so I, I just didn't really bother. But you know, it, whether I'm not even sure my dad particularly used it, he might have done. Yeah. But um, I, I mean, I, I loved that hi-fi. It was just a, it was a like one of those ones in a like a cabinet in a small, yeah, like a small got it. glass door. Yeah, and it had um, it had your record player on the top. It had like your sort of tuner, yeah. radio tuner slash um, amplifier in the middle, and then it That's had it, tape, yeah. and then below it was like space to stack your records and stuff like that. It was a lovely, yeah. lovely thing, and. And uh, and Radio One and um, because that was mainly the, the only station we really listened to on it, but yeah. sounded crystal clear. I mean, just like you know, you couldn't like even in sort of really quiet or silent parts, you couldn't hear any, you know, any hiss or or yeah. um, crackling or anything like that. And and when you recorded off Radio One, which we did often for the top forty, yes, definitely. Um, you know, this this sounded so good, so. Although I used to take the piss out of my dad a bit, saying, "Oh, you're you're tighter than a duck's ass because you're always taping off the radio." <laughs> yeah. To be fair, the the stuff he taped off the radio and the stuff I taped off off that as well just sounded yeah. really good. It was like, you know, it was as good as anything you could go well, out and buy. Really, I don't think the tapes were overly ex expensive. It's something like five five no. pack of C sixties or something or C nineties for like three ninety nine, something like that. 
So, yeah. you know, pretty yeah. inexpensive to do yeah. it. Like I say, metal tapes were quite expensive. And if you want yeah. to try and find metal tapes now in 2023, good luck. But, um, yeah, like your type ones and then to an extent your, your type twos, your chrome tapes. I think they were always reasonably pro. And everywhere sold them as well, don't forget. Yeah. Like yeah. Boots, The Chemist, Woolworths. Um, Smiths. Yeah, pretty much any yeah. record yeah. shop that you went into would also have a little section mm. where you could buy your blank tapes. I think and... we even got them in the local ga SO garage as well. Yeah, yeah, you could you could get them anywhere, and yeah. and some were better than others. Like I suppose if you got like a Boots own brand or something, yeah, then, yeah you know, yeah, enough. you might be saving two or three quid if you decide to buy the um, Sony or I'm trying to think of another premium. Like I think there was. Um, I think TDK were considered. TDK, a yeah, they were a good one. Um, Scotch, yeah. I think Scotch did do audio tapes, but I kind of more yeah. associate them with video tapes. Is it uh, J JVC as well? Yeah, JVC. And, I mean, a lot, a lot of your hi-fi manufacturers of the time was, would was it bass, manufacture bass, the tapes as well. Base tape. Yeah, yeah. But so I, the ones I, with I the silver Base for yeah. bass for. Or B A. Yeah. I just obviously yeah. say B A S F, which is even more yeah. than mouthful. That's, really, that's that was it. B A S S F F. Thank, thank you. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Yeah, yeah Richard remembers uh, T D K. I think we use T D K a lot as well. Yeah. I don't, even though our equipment was Sony, and like we just used to like Sony products generally. I don't think we yeah. had many Sony audio cassettes actually. Not. I, th I think they might have been a bit too expensive for me, Dad. Yeah. Like, you know, he to be fair on him, he didn't skimp too much when it came to buying cassettes. He wouldn't always go for the cheapest, well, you know, no, boots I had some... his own brand or whatever. But I don't yeah. recall him rare, uh, rarely, if ever, getting any any Sony audio tapes. Here's a question though, Jason. Um, what I mean, it's pretty. I mean, the answer to me is pretty obvious. But which would you prefer, uh, C60s or C90s? Uh, well, C90s, ideally. Yeah, even though they're a bit more expensive. Yeah, but that's right. I had, a, I even had, um, I can't remember who made them now, I even had some C120s uh, at one point. Now, yeah, now I'm glad you mentioned them because yeah. a lot of stereo and hi-fi manufacturers would... Can't, I mean, they, I wouldn't say they, they didn't recommend, but they kind of try. If you looked at the manuals and stuff, they kind of try and discourage you from yeah. using 120 minute tape, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because um, I know, I know there weren't very many people that made them. Because the the tape, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Richard makes the point here. They they tended to break. I had that with the tape with all sorts of tapes anyway. Yeah, but then that, yeah, but if it's a C sixty or a C ninety you're using, yeah, and that's snapping a lot. That's more likely to be Quality. your equipment. Whereas yeah. a C one twenty, because if you think about it, a C one twenty, it's the it's the same size cassette shell, but they've yeah. got to get a load more tape in it. So what? Yeah. So what do you do when you've got to get a load more tape in a in a small space that's normally got a lot less taping. Yeah. You thin the t you thin the tape out, don't you? You make yeah, you make exactly. it yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, you, it's the one of those things you never really think about it at the time. You just look right. and go, "Oh wow, I can record for two hours." But yeah, yeah. Then you, it's a bit of a there's a term for it, isn't there? Like a I don't know, like a mugs, mu like like a mugs economy or something like that. It's, a, yeah. it's something like oh, it's it's something like that where yeah. if you buy a, a C one twenty, like yeah. chances are it's not going to last you. No, yeah, no. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Less of the tape, the the better. I mean, C ninety yeah. was C nineties were good because obviously you get an extra half an hour on. Yeah, uh, C sixties were fine. Like if you're recording an album, certainly like just yeah, you know, that's, that's a lot of the time. That's what you album to do. Tape to tape. Yeah. Or CD to tape, etc. Yeah, because otherwise um, you just had a great big chunk at the end, and you, you got to do the rewinding and fast forward and all the rest of yeah, it, you know. Yeah, which is a bit of a faff. Of course, it, like as as you went on, um, as as hi fi progressed in the eighties into the early nineties, you then got stuff like auto reverse on on your better quality stuff. Yeah, yeah. my my hi fi the cassette player on that is has got auto reverse, which is quite handy. And it's yeah. also and there's also the um it's some sort of initials and I've forgotten them. There's a couple of S's in it, I think, where if you if you press 
rewind or fast forward like if you hold it down or something like it'll it'll be like a, almost like a oh, scene track yeah. script type thing where yeah. it'll it'll fast forward or rewind to where it to where it hears some the start of a song yeah i think it was right. it was sil silence something or other it was sil it was sil some, silence it was some acronym. Or something like that it was some acronym yeah yeah i um, can't remember I so, know my my dad had on it on his stereo anyway. You said about recording the top forty quickly. He had a button there where you could mute the sound uh, whilst the the DJ was talking, and then release yeah. your finger to get the stuff without all the DJ yabber on it. Yeah. Okay, you had a gap, but you didn't worry about that because then you had the song without any nonsense on it. Yeah, I mean that's I suppose that's quite a nice feature. I mean, obviously, I think anyone who didn't have that would be just you know waiting to hear Bruno Brooks or whatever it is, yeah, and or, or just waiting to hear what you think's the end of a track because like yeah. you may be listening for a fade out or something yeah. like that, and you and you've got your finger poised over the pause button or or yeah. whatever or the stop button. Yeah, yeah. Oh, those were the days. Yeah. Yeah, Sim simple pleasures for sim Indeed. simple. Indeed, you know, well, why not? You know, it was mm. a good way of. I think it was a good way of of getting the getting the music because obviously later on, uh, you know, we get into that later on. Yeah, and obviously you had your portable players and whatnot, but it was just uh, you know a fun way of having the music. It didn't take up an awful lot of space, not like albums did. Yeah, you know, um, and like you said, being able to record on them. And, and uh, you know, make up your own stuff, which was a hell of a lot of fun. Right, yeah. So, um, now, that's just reminding me about um, about a couple of misconceptions about cassettes that I want I want to clear up um, here today. Right, the first one. Right, what what did you use to wind to wind your tape like manually, like say for like. You, your Walkman was out of batteries or you weren't near oh. it? <clears throat> Probably a pencil, something like that. But they didn't always... It had to you, be a certain you shape. You didn't use a pencil. That is... I don't know. I know it's been, it's become, in, in today, as we're talking now, 2023, yeah. and, well, maybe for the last 10 years or more, since, since memes were, got really popular, really. Like the, like the popular meme for, like, People talking about cassettes who really weren't there when they were out was like, yeah. oh, you always needed a bit, you always needed a pencil to rewind them. Exactly, Vin vinyl Dale's got it. We in the UK tended to use a big biro. Oh, maybe that was it. Yeah, perhaps. It, yeah, you, maybe that was it. I tried think, to use the pencil. You're thinking you used a pencil because of all these memes and and posters and things <laughs> that people. Well, no, in, I'm, in I'm, and it's t it's totally wrong because. Yeah. I mean, I, I've not. I mean, I've, I could probably find a pencil somewhere, and I've certainly got a few tapes to demonstrate it. Yeah. But if you put a pencil in one of those spool holes, yeah. but wind it properly, it just it just wobbles spins. about. Yeah, it just spins. No, a bit, I think a bit isn't perfect, but you yeah. can get enough purchase on it to do it. I think what it was is that I remember trying to use one, and then going, "No, that doesn't work." And then, like you say, using the bit. Because I think Vic had better better angles on it, so it actually yeah yeah, the, like, yeah, teeth. yeah the way it was shaped you could get yeah, yeah you could sort of all, just about it wasn't perfect I, now then do you know do you know the one country where they would associate pencils with winding tapes have a guess I don't know Italy no Japan all oh, right okay do you know why. What's that then? Because their pencils, their general use pencils, what they use every day in schools and things like that, they're they're thicker than ours, so they do fit perfectly. Right. A cassette spool hole. Yeah, yeah. So there's a bit of this kind of for these for, for these new modern memes. There's a bit of like, oh well, we're misremembering, but there's also this kind of well, maybe someone saw someone in Japan do it. Hey, it's possible. Their pencils, yeah. their pencils are different. Yeah. yeah. So, so they. So next time you see one of those pictures, that's or see some sort of article that says, "Oh, 
get your pencils out because cassettes are making a comeback. You can put in your comment, well, we never wound them back with pencils in the UK because they didn't yeah. fit properly. They were too yeah. thin. So shut up. <laughs> because I... I, I read an article on Facebook. It was um, it was only a couple of days ago. It just came, I just came across it, I think, because one of my friends had commented on it. And it was ITV News of all things. And it was su it was such a cringe worthy article. Yeah, it was yeah. it was basically what I just said. It was like, oh, get your pencils out, cassettes are making a comeback. Yeah. And then it and then it listed like some some supposed impressive um stats, like all oh, the sales of cassettes have doubled over the past year. Well, yeah, yeah, and that's good, that's nice, but if you compare the sales of cassettes in twenty twenty three to the sale of cassettes in say nineteen eighty eight, eighty yeah. nine, it's like a drop in the ocean. Yeah, it is. So, so to say they're making a comeback, I mean, yeah. you know, they're just trying yeah. to they're taking the vinyl revival, which to be fair has grown quite exponentially year on year. Yeah. But they're trying to they're trying to bring cassettes into that and cassettes now really they're more kind of like a sort of gimmicky souvenir type thing. Yeah it's it's I mean I I've got a couple of uh albums when I, I got some record pack and there was an album with on cassette with it. I've never played it. I haven't got anything to play it with. Right? And I probably never oh. would anyway. Right? Yes. Yeah. You know I mean, if, well if you've got the thing if you've got the album on a different format then no. Yeah, but I I do I can play tapes and I, and I do play tapes not yeah. not as much as as vinyl or CDs but no. I've, got, I've got a few and I'm happy to add the odd one into my collection <laughs> from time to time. I think the last pre-recorded cassette I bought was it might have been some Erasure ones, so like originals from the nineties. So mm. I think I bought them after I bought Matt Berry's latest album. That I've got that on cassette as well, but. Um, so yeah, um, that's that's one preconception that youngsters and people yeah. people with bad memories have about cassettes. Now it's another one I want to I want to talk about as well, right? You know, well, okay, Jay. So I'll, I'll ask you when okay. when you used to record onto cassette, um, be it off the radio or you're recording just general, yeah. If say if you're recording general tracks off CDs or whatever. Yeah. What did you used to call that tape when you'd finished it? When you filled up your C90 or whatever it was, and you'd say um, to a friend or to your sister... I know, I know what you're probably going to say, but I don't think I ever really called it well, that. Well, well, that's, well, that's it. I'm asking you what you yeah. did call it, not what you didn't call it. Right. Well, just just music, music tape, radio, radio recordings, whatever. Call, that's what, I, it, what it happens to be. Did you ever um, call it a compilation, maybe? So, I suppose sometimes it wasn't really a word I used, but yeah, you could right. you could argue that it was. Right. What right? What didn't? What definitely didn't you call it? I wouldn't call it a mixtape because that's exactly what right. Mean. Thank you. Yeah, right. because mixtape mix is them actually putting all the songs together as a remix or whatever. Yeah, not that's not strictly true, but I'm not going to get bogged down in the in the finer yeah. details of it. Yeah. Right, mixtapes an American term. It derives obviously from like your kind of early to mid eighties hip hop scene. Yeah. Nobody, including myself or anyone I knew, and every let's face it, we all used cassettes like in yeah. the eighties and well into the nineties. No one in this country ever called it a mixtape, and now we're doing it. It's some Americanism that for some reason we've adopted and now we're using it retrospectively like yeah um like there was a video done by um a friend of mine nice chap rob walker i think it was a contest entry yeah and he said this is my mixtape for my contest yeah. i'm like and i was watching it i was like rob i mean he's even older than me so he sure yeah. like, he definitely won't be using it like Rob, we never called it a mixtape back, I think, back then. That's something we're calling it now because, like, it's an Americanism that's yeah. that's kind of transcended over, that's transferred over here, and now we and, and well, now 
we call it anything that's recorded on cassette that's like a compilation yeah i just named it i just used to name it what it was you know whatever it was top 40 or whatever well yeah i, I don't mean yeah. specifically name it i just mean yeah. generally when you've got a you, you say oh i've got a music tape here. i've got a compilation yeah. I'll, i think you say compilation maybe it's a little bit kind of stuffy yeah. of me but you know yeah. <laughs> Maybe no, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I had a set, a, a set name as such, really. It was just a radio we recording. Call them, we didn't call them mixtapes, and it does annoy no. me that, that no. British people now are saying, oh, yeah, I used to make mixtapes. It's like, no, you didn't, because yeah. you used to make compilations. You used to record songs on cassette. Yeah. But you never called them mixtapes because that word hadn't entered the, 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 the British English vocabulary yeah. then. I blame Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah, that that might that might be why that's that's got yeah. so um because all that is is a compilation, really, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yes, yes, definitely and I definitely broke the tabs off. Yeah. Um and I'll and I'll tell you the other thing as well is using sellotape when you when it was an old tape that you didn't want to have anymore, uh, then you uh, oh, right, Rob's here. Yeah, Rob, yeah, the contest was make a mixtape, but I mean, I entered that contest as well, and I'm pretty certain I didn't say the word mixtape at all. It's for people, you know, certainly people of our, all right, say for like you're, say for like you're in your 20s or even pushing into your 30s, and you just get into cassette now because, because you never had it back when you were a kid like we did. Yeah. All right, if you're watching Guardians of the Bleeding Galaxy and like the same, <laughs> fair enough. But, Rob, yeah. for people, anyone kind of aged 40 to 60, which is basically me, Jason, you, Richard, <laughs> Dale, probably anyone, yeah. we didn't call it then, did we? You didn't think it was a big I don't think so, no. it's, not a, it's not a big deal. It's not like, no, you know, no. no one's going to get sent to the Tower of London. <laughs> No, it was just it was Rob, one of Rob, these I'll, times. Tell, Rob, I'll tell you now. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you now. I know we can't go back in in the TARDIS to prove it, but I'll bet you anything. You you never said it when you were younger, just yeah. like you never used a pencil, or you know, well, or you, maybe you tried to use a success. Ever a since preconception that you used to call records vinyl, yes, okay, now. Well, yeah, right? that, it, I, that's it's a, it's similar. It's a little bit. Yeah. Diff, it's a little bit different. It, yeah. What, yeah, it's vinyl. I remember people saying vinyl. I just call them records. Years, but it, 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 what people also said records just as much. Yeah, but, but like records is all albums. That scene's kind of changed, really. Yeah. But yeah, and yeah. Rob, did you, yeah, well, you, you were you were pissing in the wind there, Rob, because pencil pencils over here are rubbish. Unless you got some Japanese pencils imported, you would be better off using a big. See, yeah. like I don't know, Rob's a good tw got a good twenty years nearly on me, and uh, I'm, I'm the, the one who's uh, teaching some things here. It's the old Mandela effect again, isn't it? Yeah, remembering something different to what it actually yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's the Mandela effect. You you're looking at memes and what young people think they know about, which they know fuck all. That's <laughs> And you're like, oh yeah, maybe I did used to do that. Or well, you didn't. You didn't say yeah. that. You didn't do that. You or if you did do that, then you realised it was a waste of time, and you went yeah. and did something better. So that's yeah. that's the two misconceptions about audio cassette in the UK. Uh, I'm not saying this is a thing that transcends over to America or Japan. I've already explained about the Japanese pencil thing, but that so uh, that's, yeah. that's an easy one to clear up. Yeah, the only thing I did... Well, no, they can't have done, because it would have to be the same. I was just wondering if it was something to do with the spindle size, but it can't be, because all of them took the same size spindle. Exactly, they've all got the exact yeah. same size spindle. They've all got the exact same size room in, in the housing you, in itself. That's I'll why I was saying about, about the 120-minute cassettes. Like, yeah. if, you, if you think about it, it's obvious that they have to, they have to make the formula of the tape thinner yeah. So it can fit more into the same size yeah. housing. The I think I think what I'm remembering with the pencil business was that like I said, trying it, and what it would do, it wouldn't do anything. Then it would just spin around there. You might get the odd tooth 
that would move, and it would move a little bit. Yeah, it, but it was. It wasn't yeah, very but practical. Yeah, but it's like it's like pissing in the wind, isn't it? Like you just yeah. fiddle for ages. Yeah, it, it was quicker. Yeah, it was oh, far quicker to do it the other way. The per the perfect thing to use to manually wind a tape is a Japanese pencil. So yeah. Um, if ever you get back into cassettes, anybody, then uh, and you yeah. want to manually wind your tapes on, um, don't listen to Rob Walker because he'll just tell you. To <laughs> use, he'll just tell you to use a good old British HB, and you'll be there faffing mm. for hours. Um, go, on, go on the Japanese auction sites and order yeah. a, a Japanese pencils from um, <laughs> off Baie or or something like that. I'm just uh, sort of it, one. <laughs> I just sort of remember if I actually used um, a flat headed screwdriver as well. I I never did. I'm trying to think if that would work. I, I, yeah, I can't remember. I thought, I, I, I thought most of the heads would be too small for them. Yeah, I have a vague them. recollection. I'm talking about the big, the big, chunky ones. Yeah, but I, I mean, if... we've talked a lot about audio cassette, and we have got other formats that we. Yeah, that we okay. Work um, but if if you've got any other um, things to say, any other memories about cassettes, Jason, then now's your chance. No, you... I think I think that's the, the, you know the main sort of thing is just yeah. you know and like like I said, doing the home recordings. Admittedly, did... a lot of this it was me just trying to right some wrongs with people's yeah. minds, yeah. <laughs> rather. Yeah. Than, but, uh, you know, as well, long as long as I feel I've done good and righteous work yeah. tonight, then that's the main thing. The one thing I was going to say was, okay. although okay. we were talking about the remix bit. Right, I did actually do a remix tape, and I used my mate had a stereo where you can play the record player, the radio, and the tape player effectively. Although you weren't supposed to, I think yeah. we ended up breaking it's it. But you could play them all at the, at the same time, and then because it was twin tape, you could then record what you were doing. So we basically went around the garden with a portable cassette player recording all these sounds, and then overlaid it over an instrumental track. And there you are, we had our remix. But it worked. It wasn't very good, but it worked. As long as you have fun. And, and that well, was that it. was it, yeah. And tapes were fun. The, the quick, like, I remember having a little, um, I think it was Fisher Price or something like that. Little, yeah. It was like this weird sort of like, kind of diarrhea brown colour kids <laughs> it was it like a nasty yeah. colour but yeah. I loved it carrying it around had a little handle it had a little yeah. microphone on it so I just record myself being silly and um, yeah. in the 90s I had a talk boy after Home Alone 2 came out yeah. asked for a talk boy for Christmas and got one uh, uh, the, the fun we used to have when I took that to school <laughs> yeah no yeah. He, he... Rob, Rob, I'd love for you to make to make me an audio compilation, but I don't want you to make me a mixtape because that'd mean you having to <laughs> either, either regress thirty years and be and become a, a, a post millennial, or it means you having to move to America, and I don't want you to do either of them, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, right, we'll, right, we'll move on to another yeah. form. Let's move okay. on to one that's. Um, uh, Let's move on to what I think most people would have upgraded when the um, in well certainly for me it was the mid nineties, but some people probably would have done it a lot earlier. I some did, people yeah. maybe even a lot later. Let's talk about um, the compact disc. I know you've got some thoughts about the compact yeah, disc. Yeah. Jason. Well, tell us the CD. Yeah. Yes, uh, the CD. What old Maggie Philbin in Crew on Tomorrow's World was saying, the best music format ever, because you couldn't scratch it, you couldn't break it, right? It wouldn't skip, it wouldn't crackle, it wouldn't hiss, it wouldn't pop. And okay, yes, some of that was true, but not much of it. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't, crackle, got... they didn't crackle or pop, I suppose. No, but they did skip. They definitely skipped. Yeah, often that'd be kind of a laser alignment thing, though, wouldn't it? Oh, so you got if you got a scratch on there as well, because the oh, laser well, wouldn't yeah, pick yeah. it up. If, if this, uh, um, yeah, from a from the equipment point of view, I'll say, but yeah, yeah obviously, yeah. If, if the CDs, if the CDs scratch, yeah. then uh, well, that was the whole point. You weren't supposed to be able to scratch them, according to what they were saying. Which is absolutely rubbish. Yeah, but I mean, I suppose as soon as you buy your first CD, say if you're an early adopter, and when would they come out over here? Maybe I think they came out mostly worldwide around eighty two or eighty three. Yeah. So you'd have thought Britain would get them eighty three, maybe I... eighty four. I, I got my early for me to remember CDs, yeah. obviously, but yeah. you might be able to it. Yeah, I I I got my 
my first, if you like, proper stereo. I had I had a number of record players and stuff that I've been handed down and all the rest of it. But I got my first proper stereo with turntable, twin deck, CD, all the rest of it. And it was a Say Show one. I don't know if you remember Say Show. I do. I do remember Say Show. Yeah, yeah. It was, I think it was. I think it was Dixon's own brand, something like that. And uh, yeah, I got one. For, I got one for. I think I got one for my sixteenth birthday. So, so talking eighty six. Um. And I actually had a CD in there when I got it, which you didn't know at the time, right? Because they, they got the display model because it was cheaper. Nothing yeah. wrong with it. played fine. Um, and it ended up being Billy Idol's Greatest Hits. And someone had obviously put it in there to, to play in store, to demonstrate. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. 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 So I was like, oh, great. I'll have that Billy Idol free CD. Why not? Yeah. So I suppose then that, that Billy Idol compilation was your first your first album on CD. That, exactly, it, 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think I got something else as well. I can't remember. I think it might have been Iron Maiden or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, that's the thing. It's like I suppose it's with anything really. Say, if like you you get bought a Game Boy or something when you're a kid, it's like it'd be a bit miserable if your parents bought you a Game Boy and then it didn't come with any games. No, exactly. I'm, I mean, I know they're all bundled with Tetris, but just just think, yeah. just say if you bought a second hand one or something and like it didn't yeah. include the game, yeah, it'd be oh, where's that Game Boy you wanted? Great, have I got anything to play on it? Nah, oh. <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, you'd have been a bit miffed. So I got my first CD player in 1995, Christmas Day, and remember it well. Me, me, and my yeah. brother both got a CD player each. It was like a little. Now then, this is something else where sort of old terms are now being used for something a bit different than what the actual original meaning was. But now, <coughs> if, now, if you go on Amazon or something, they'd be under the name Boombox. But of course, a Boombox from the eighties is like a great big chunky yeah. rectangular thing. But it was like a little. CD cassette player with a handle. I mean, you know, yeah. people call them boom boxes now, which isn't strictly true. No. Um, but um, I got a Sony one, which is like a kind of, I think it was like a purple thing. It was really, yeah. really nice. And my brother got like this black Philips thing, which was very similar with specs and stuff. Um, Richard got his first CDs in 91, and they were Paul McCartney's Ram and Donovan's Fairy Tale. Oh, that's pretty cool. A yeah. couple, of, couple of nice albums there as, yeah, as well, yeah. I'd, I'd wager. Um, yeah, I mean, let's face it, CD was, I mean, his Trojan horse, kind of like the, the correct term, where it, it's it's kind of, a, it's almost like a cynical format, really. It was designed yeah. for you to, to chuck out all your old records and replace them with yeah. this shiny... I know, yeah, I know what you mean. And I a lot, other and a lot of people is. did. You know, yeah. I it's a it's a story I'm a bit embarrassed to tell, but I remember with with the approval of my father as well. Yeah, he was getting in CD the following year as well, 1996. Remember swapping some of my dad's Beatles albums with a friend of mine who's who's a big Beatles fan for yeah. the, the same things on CD, and my friend must have seen me coming <laughs> doing that. Because looking back, I'm like, and, and one of the things, uh, one of the things I'm, I regret it so much was the original double EP for the Magical Mystery Tour. With, with oh, the, oh, blimey! Oh, uh, that's that's such a yeah. nice, that's such a nice little set that is. Yeah. And what did I get in return? The boring um, reissued in 1987 or something in a not very interesting jewel case Magical yeah. Mystery Tour album on CD. It didn't seem like a fair swap, really. No, no, no. Uh, I I would agree with you on that one. But um, you know, but CDs. Well, I mean, you, they still, yeah, yeah. They're never going to get back to the the heights that they once did. But no, um, they were by the mid mid to late nineties. You know, they certainly mm -hmm. overtaken cassette. I think vinyl that probably started, or records that had started. It's declined probably in um, by the late eighties. I would I would have thought yeah. what with just because of cassette doing so well. Um, I think, but it's it just looking back, it seems like a really sort of cynical kind of thing to do to like mm. bring bring a, a format compact disc out and then it you basically with all your promotion and your advertising and everything you're saying 
you're telling your customers, oh, your your old record collection sounds crap. It, yeah, well, that was too much room. You want to chuck it out, flog it, chuck it in the bin, whatever. And you want to get these CDs because they sound better, they take up less room, yeah, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I don't know, it seems a bit of a I I... Know, it's a miserable way of of advertising. I mean, I get it, I get why they do it because yeah. they're making you know these record companies they're making money twice. I mean, yeah. you know, they're still making money twice off me occasionally when I buy. Like when I bought Ramstein's new album, and I made sure I definitely got it on CD and on yeah. vinyl at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the other things like New Order, I've been although that's really with with third party sellers, so it's it's not the same. But I'm still doubling up now. So yeah, well, I I think yeah, I think no, the thing is you 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 have it on CD for convenience sake, mm. right? Um, and I still I still do buy CDs. I got one just the other week. Right in a pack, right? But it also came with a, um, you know, a vinyl copy as well. Yeah. So you've got one that's nice. You keep pristine. You play, you know, you might play it a couple of times because it's fun to play it on vinyl, right? But then you've got the CD that you can play over and over and over again to your heart's content, and mm. you're not that worried about it. It's getting damaged or or whatever because you know. The chances are you can replace it relatively easily. You know, you you, yeah. pick, you pick the same album up for a quid. You know, like you run down the line. Well, I've, I've had a few um, album like vinyl LPs like that where they yeah. bundled the CD in. I, I know there's, um, I think there's one or two lieback LPs I've got where the CD yeah. came with it as standard. But for me, how my setup is, and I know everyone's setup's different, so it's yeah. you know whatever's the easiest thing for you to play is, is you know your your choice really. But yeah, I I just like to stick the record on now if I can. Yeah, but well, if if I have to buy something that's that's only out on CD, and there is a couple of things like the um, I think I think the records roundup video I've got coming out tomorrow. There's there's an album I've got on CD simply because it's not out on any other format, and exactly. I think the one I've filmed that's coming out a week from a week um, next Monday has also got a CD that's think, not out on any other format. Yeah, I think that was part of the issue though. Really, was because they, it wasn't just the it was record industry as a whole that embraced CD. So obviously we did have this decline in vinyl records. And during the 90s, certainly, you didn't have a lot of albums come out initially on anything but CD. Mm. I don't think, in fact, I think some of them you couldn't even get on tape. It was CD or nothing. Well, yeah, I mean, um, I think pre-recorded tapes, I mean, we're going back there again, but just to yeah. sort of elaborate on your on your comment, I think they, you, they were still relatively commonplace and, and pretty much every album would come out on cassette. And yeah. Yeah. Probably the late nineties, early two thousands, but I know what you're saying certainly, certainly as the two thousands sort of really got going. Um, yeah, you, know, you weren't finding tapes hardly anywhere. I think I remember having maxi tapes as well. Actually, you know, they seen the singles on tapes. Yeah, oh, the, uh, the the singles, you mean? Yeah, the singles, whatever they called them. Yeah, but some yeah, of them were I, called maxi tapes. Yeah, depending what country you got them from. I never really liked Kassingles. I had a, I had a few. Yeah. I don't know. It was just. I think I think it was because you always got like there was like maybe two, maybe three tracks on a side if you're lucky, but then you, like, yeah. you get the exact same on the on the on the other side. I always yeah. found that a bit of a rip off. I'm thinking. Um, well, I mean, I know like you know it's less tape in it. It's like yeah. a. Like, it's like a C15 or something like that, really, for a single. I think. You know, I think. I think most of them of mine that I had, I could be wrong, I'd have to have a look, but I think a lot of mine was one song one side, one song the other. Mm. Right? Um, I know the ones I had seemed to just repeat yeah. on side A and B. but it can, we can anyway, well be. Yeah, yeah. but um, CDs, I mean, I had a load of CD singles. CD singles mm. were my favourite thing to collect for a good two or three years from, say, night, early 96, probably to, like, Actually, more probably till about two thousand, I think, really, um, because they were because they were cheap and 
I listen. Yeah. I'm still listening to not loads of radio, but I was listening to a bit of radio. And then yeah. when I went to college, I was doing college radio. So I started listening to more sort of local and independent radio just to kind of, you know, try and maybe see if any any anything would sink in when I was yeah. doing college radio sort of thing. Um, evening, Nick's Vinyl Butty. Nice to see you, mate. Hello. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I used to love it, especially when I knew um, I used to – um, make sure I researched all the release dates and stuff, which before the yeah. internet, I suppose, was could have yeah. been a little bit tricky. But um, I was sort of like listened out on radio programs and like, oh, they just mentioned the release date for that. I'll make a note and some magazines and things, and you get yeah. adverts that say the dates. So I used to, I used to love it if I couldn't get in on a Monday, which is when all the new stuff would come out. Then going into town on the yeah. Saturday, and then seen a single that I'd heard on the radio or, or wherever or seen on the telly yeah. the chart show or something and um then seeing that it was like 199 as opposed to another new release that was like maybe 399 it's like yeah oh, that one I want it's actually cheaper than that one yeah and then some shops that obviously have a slight price variations as well I well, mean that's, that's, it, yeah. that's my that's my memory of CD singles it's like it speaks to yeah it speaks to the miser in me, which um, you know I, I wouldn't right. consider myself miserly, but I did. I did used to like getting getting stuff for cheap, and I, that's why I've got way more singles than albums because singles were cheap. Yeah. Also, you might not necessarily want the whole album. You know, there's just like what you you know you might have heard it and said, well, yeah, but I only want the one song. I don't like any of the other stuff. You yeah, know, exactly. um, yeah, that was that was the case um, a lot for me. Uh, some singles they were by bands who, like, I'd be quite embarrassed to buy the album. I'd yeah. be like, no, I'm not buying their album because it'll mostly be crap. But I really like this one single by them, so I'll get that. Now, Richard, I'm glad you've brought that up because Jason's got a prop to show us. Oh, what the floppies? No, oh, no, the CD singles, the CD singles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Jason's got a three-inch CD single there. We, uh, can you tell us what it is, Jace? It's um, Depeche Mode, Enjoy the Silence. Oh, a, a great single as well. It was, the, it, was the, it was the quad mix, you know, the one that's 15 minutes long. Mm. So, yeah, and you had the uh, – it's because some of the players didn't have the gap in. You had the adapter as well, which I've yeah. still got. Now then, the, the three-inch CD single or the mini CD, whatever you want to call it, yeah, that was what I, from what I know about that form. I suppose it's like a, a sub format, really, of the CD. Yeah, yeah. But they released them as three inch as opposed to a normal CD, which is their five inch, I think. Aren't five, they? yes, five, yes, I believe so. Um, so they did it how you know, in kind of like deference to vinyl records, where you've got a 12 inch for an album, yeah, and a seven inch for a single. So in the CD age, you've got a five inch for an album and a yep. three inch for a single. I but, think I've got. But yeah, they didn't. Um, they didn't carry it on because it was yeah. such a hassle for all the CD manufacturers and pressing plants to be making these little three inch CD singles. Yeah, it was like it wasn't cost effective. And well, was, so, they just, so they just started putting singles, you know, three, four tracks or whatever it yeah. might be, onto a standard size five inch CD. Yeah, yeah. Which, well, which, is, you, which for me is a bit of a shame, really, because it, because if I think if the CD single, if the if every one had come out on a three on a three inch diameter disc, yeah, yeah, I think I think it'd be a more fondly remembered thing now because it'd be it'd be properly different. But whereas, like, you've only yeah. got the one. Richard's mentioned that he's only got two. I rarely saw the really little ones, yeah. but, uh, you know. I, I think, think by, the, by the time I got um, got into CD in, in 1995, 96, I think that was way past the point where the, all the companies yeah. were saying, oh, well, we're just going to put them on normal five-inch discs now. Yeah. Well, I, I had – I got that one. I got two – the first two Nana Cherry singles on – Mini mini CD mm. and um, do you remember Cat? It was with Prince. Uh, I, the dancer. Yeah, I've, I've vague vague memory. Yeah, she 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 did some stuff with Bomb the Bass, um, yeah. and I've got that on single 
on little, little dilly ones. But they came in the cardboard, little dilly cardboard sleeve instead of the jewel cases. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I remember my my friend who ran the college radio station. He um he had a couple of the little um mini yeah. three inch CD singles. I think he had the Colt Edie Chow Baby, and then a couple yeah. of. Other things. Oh, sorry, I'm going straight again. It was, again. It was yeah. funny because um we were, um one of um one of them. I hope it wasn't the Colt one. Cause I think he's quite yeah. like that song. But um, the CD player we used, which was a decent CD player, front loader and everything in the yeah. video studio, I put the um, I put one of these three inch CDs in it, and it just shot off down into the back of the me- mechanism. <laughs> because you didn't have the you didn't have the little the groove in it for it to sit in. Yeah, and we could never get it back. But it it didn't stop the CD player work. The CD no. player still worked. It was it's just it, was, it had this little CD single in it. I, <laughs> it might on you. I just worried about it reflecting laser like, beams all over the place. That's like saying to me, mate, I was uh, it was it was kind of like my, my boss for want of a better term. At the yeah. Stuff. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's like oh, it's all right. Don't matter. <laughs> oh God. Can we get that back? No, no, I'm not no, messing no, no. With the whole thing. Open up. it up, yeah. <laughs> but, um... And they said you must never ever do that because it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. What's that they say? Yeah. yeah Nick Nick's says he's got three of the. Yeah. yeah the it, it's, it, I, I see there's a bit of a novelty now. It's something you know, funny you can say you've got in your collection because not a lot yeah. of people will have yeah. them necessarily. Yeah, it's, it's, it is a novelty because they were so rare. Like I say, I don't think they were even coming out anymore hardly no. by the time I got into CD. I think by the early 90s, you know, it was just a case of the company saying, now nah, this is this is a waste of money making yeah, these exactly. CDs. We're just not going to bother anymore. Whereas obviously it's different with vinyl because of like speeds and things yeah. like that. You know, and the dark tw- thing. Let's not forget 12 inch singles didn't really become a thing until the yeah. 1980s yeah. either. So, no, no. You know, really thing... all you had from you know the 1950s to the 1980s was your yeah. 12 inch size album and then a seven inch size single. But I mean, we can get onto that in a little bit. The, the other thing you've got is the pain in the arse is you can't get the bloody thing back in the caddy now. All right. Well, yeah, you wouldn't see them <laughs> using props, though, Chase. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you'll have to uh, sort that yeah. out after we go. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, CDs have kind of lived on, have sort of scraped on by. I mean, yeah, when, when CD rewriters became cheaper in the two thousands, I mean that that seemed like a, a very very brief kind of revolution, really, didn't it? Like, cause obviously downloading songs and like finding free songs as well was uh, yeah. was getting big at the same time and it was like it was... oh wow i can suddenly i can suddenly have all these cds all these yeah. albums all these all these compilations or if you live in rob walker's house all these mixtapes and, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you can you know yeah. you can, you can make you can make 50 of them and all you need to do is buy a, a, like, yeah. a 50 different well <clears throat> I think I'm thinking of sort of another subject for another day, really. But there were other things that were recorded than music on two CDs. So, well, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we know. That. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there was, there was CD video and video CD, which were. Two oh, then, yeah, that was that as well. I, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've got I've got a CD video. I've got the um, it's it's a funny one. Um, it's the True Faith. Um, CD video single from New Order. I've got that. Yeah, uh, and it's, got... it is. It's it's a layer that's like a laser disc layer, and then I think it's the outer layer that's the audio bit. Yeah, or it might be the other way around. But yeah, well, yeah, the mean... CD the CD video, which is like a gold coloured thing. Yeah, is actually mostly laser disc technology. Yeah, they also had. Uh, in enhanced, what they called enhanced CDs, which was uh, a mixture between a CD, a CD audio CD, and a CD ROM. So if you mm. put it in your computer, yeah, they it would read, read a file when computer. you'd have the video on there. I would say the early two thousands, weren't they? Where yeah, where if you it would often be a single. I remember having some Ramstein CD singles, and at least one of them. I um, even you could play if if you had the operating system of the time, which obviously yeah. wouldn't really work now. 
no. you, could play, you could play the video or you might have a was, clip from a concert or something. It was something like, like Quick Play or something like that. Yeah. And, yeah um, but no, I'm sure it was back in the, in the late 90s because I went in about 97, I went mad just buying CD singles left, right and centre of anything that I liked. Don't know why. I've still got loads of them. And I'm sure some of those were in hard CDs because it had its own little logo as well. Mm. So... Yeah. At least that's why I remember it. Maybe the brain's a bit funny in the way what I'm remembering, but I'm pretty sure that was the case. Yeah. So, um, uh, I mean, there is a lot to say about compact disc, but yeah, you know, we've talked about some of our memories, and you know, we've spent quite a long time on it. So, uh, for me, I yeah. think that's enough. If you if you've got anything else to say about no, it, no, 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 I think that's fine. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. what format would you like to talk about next, Jace? Well, should we talk about one of your favourites? Mini disc. Hey! Hey! Oh, I think I might be able to reach over for a prop as well, actually. Yeah. There we I are. Think... There's a mini disc. Yeah. I still... love oh, that format. I've just not got round to listening yeah. to some of my yeah. um, new mini discs. These are the yeah. ones that come out on Bandcamp and things like yeah. that. So, oh. um, yeah, mini disc. Oh, I, I love it so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Um, my hi fi is obviously capable for mini disc. I've also got a couple of um, portables. I've got one that's a yeah. recorder, um, one that's just a player um, that I did an unboxing yeah. video on YouTube about, about well, that would be about three years ago nearly, I think. Um, started being developed in the early 90s. It got released... Uh, Europe and Japan, certainly, I think, around 1992. Yep. Um, competing at the time with one that I'll touch upon briefly as well, but I've never used it, Digital Compact Cassette, which yeah. was another Philips thing. It was Sony versus Philips in those days, and Philips, um, they, they had invented the original Compact Cassette. But really, if you think about it, um, Philips kind of didn't not drop the ball as such, but... It was it was Sony who really made the audio tape what it was, thanks yeah. to the Walkman in the late seventies, yeah. early eighties. But they but they were using technology that they'd had no part of in inventing, really. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was it was a Philips thing. And yeah. um, this time it was like Sony versus Philips. Sony were like going away from tape and stuff like that. Yeah. Into this little optical disc that was housed in a caddy. That's a mini disc, by the way. And Philips were doing um, the digital compact cassette. Um, yeah, there was there was that as well, wasn't there? That was um, a few years earlier. That that was yeah. something that never really became a proper no, no. home home format it, because yeah. there was so little released on it, and there was also problems like they couldn't really sell it properly in America because um, of the um, legal restrictions over there. Yeah. And that, and to a, to an extent, that's also what happened with mini disc in America as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. That's why mini disc. It was big in Japan, like because um, in Japan they, they just don't care if you copy music. It's not a, no, it's no. not a big deal. It's not frowned upon. And in Europe, it it really should have caught on better in um, in Britain than it did. But I think yeah. a lot of it, it wasn't any legal things or anything. It was. Um, it was the the shops and the distributors over here. They were overpricing the stuff. They were. They they're were. Making, that was the thing. They're making a pre-recorded mini disc album like twice the price of a CD, and yeah. it sounds pretty much exactly the same as a CD. Maybe yeah. a little better depending if you've got well if you've got the equipment. Again, it was it was the effectively the mini CD in a case. Yeah, it was almost like well, an audio audio record, format a floppy disc. A recordable. It was. It wasn't. It wasn't a CD because obviously it was. You know, you've got to differentiate yeah. technically. But it was a recordable opt optical disc yes, in, a, yeah, plastic, yeah. in a plastic shell. Yeah. yeah. Um, Nick's, no, ne mean... Nick's never seen a mini disc. Well, I've got plenty of videos on my channel. I'm going to cheap plug myself now. Plenty of videos on my channel where I do show mini discs, Nick. So if you would yeah. like to see some for the first time then um, look back in my music collecting playlist. Yeah. Uh, I... but, um, it's it's a format. I still love it. I love the fact that like, there's still these little boutique record labels still bringing um, albums yeah. and mini-disc out. 
Um, it's ah, oh, I never properly got into it at the, at the time. My no, friend, my guy who who uh, I worked under at um, college radio, he he was getting into mini disc, and he was like, "Show me how he like sort of you know." Um, edited tracks and and did yeah. and put his jingles and stuff on his on mini disc and stuff like that. So he was getting into it. And that was like ninety seven, ninety eight. So it was. Um, I think the price for some of the mini disc equipment was starting to come down at that point. Yeah. But like I say, for not just the mini discs themselves, but for the equipment, for a lot of the time, it it were all too expensive. And I think that I think that's what if, what really killed it off in this country yeah i mean i i had one back when i when they when they came out i had a stereo mini disc stereo mm. um and my mate had a actually a portable mini disc player because he loved it as well the thing with the stupid thing was i didn't own really any albums on mini disc it was all Stuff again, 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 like you can't well, that's, that's it was thing. stuff it I was, recorded. That was what that was what it was replacing. Really, it was it was replacing your blank audio tapes. Yeah. Really, you look yeah. like yeah. I I have got quite a lot of pre-recorded mini discs. Um, I mean, I'm looking at them now, and um, I've got must be getting on for a hundred. Um, and some of them are, are pretty valuable and rare as well. Um, but. It was f first and foremost. It was a, a home, like a home recording format. What you'd, yeah. you'd you'd record someone's album from CD onto it, or you'd make your compilation. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, my thing, my thing was to go down the local library and and hire the CDs for like you, you hire the CD for like a quid for yeah. like several, for a week or something like that, and you just go and record all these albums onto you know compact disc onto uh, mini disc. Mm. You know, and then if you no. really liked it, obviously you did yeah. go out and buy it proper. And and that and that was a very popular thing to do in Japan because um, borrow, borrowing CDs in like maybe not libraries as such, but in kind yeah. of like um, you know like video rental shops. That yeah, exactly. Yeah, sort of thing. Borrowing CDs to do that was was a big thing in Japan as yeah. well. So um, that's what the the mini disc really took off about as well oh. as as about as well as yeah. It took. I also love the fact that when you recorded the audio off the radio, it was really, really crisp. Yeah, if you've got your settings you know, there again, it, it all depends on your settings and yeah. you, know, you know what you're doing. But yeah, yeah. Right, um, because... I, love, I love the sound quality of mini disc. I, um, for me, it's kind of it's a bit it's a bit of um, trickery. Is what's the what's the term? It's like um, snake oil or something. Uh, <laughs> really, there is no massively discernible difference to my ears between CD and mini disc but no. when, I put a, when I put a mini disc on I kind of always convince myself that this sounds just a little I, bit nicer yeah. than a compact disc I suspect if you actually scanned it because you know you'd be able to scan CDs and stuff for the bit rate if you could do that you'd probably find they were uh, pretty equal mm. but um, I mean mini disc when recording you Maybe not quite at the beginning, but certainly, and the equipment I've got will um, bear testament to it. Um, you had like your different recording options, like you had um, you had your SP, which was your standard play. Yeah, yeah. Um, L um, LP two, LP four, and I think the um, little portable recorder I've got, I can even record in mono on that. So, but yeah. but that is kind of like a it's a mini disc recorder, but it's yeah. got a built-in mic, so it's kind of meant to be for like dictation as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, a mini disc could do it all. You could, um, you could, re you know, record good quality music if you had if you had a right recorder. You could use it as a dictaphone. Exactly. Um, well, that's why yeah. I had a my stereo. You know. Yeah. Because I um, think mine was uh, mine was a CD CD mini disc combo with a stereo, no record yeah. player. But uh, yeah, it was those those two combined. Yeah, and and, it, might, it and, might even have had tape as well. I can't remember. And all the equipment, um, you know, um, at the time it was, yeah, I, I would still say Sony were leading the way because it was their product originally. But obviously yeah. they were licensing it out to, you know, everyone else. You know, I'm trying to think some look, some big Japanese <laughs> players. I mean, Kenwood were big in Japan for mini disc. 
Um, yeah. Panasonic, obviously, they were sharp as well. Um, all and they were all pretty decent stuff by all accounts. You know, you know, it was um, it all worked how it was supposed to work. Yeah. And, and and for me, that's that's the big shame for mini disc. It really in this country and in Europe, and I mean, I'm not including America because they were just against anything that you could mm. that you could make a a copy of. Really, they just that against piracy. But yeah, um, it. Really, mini discs should have replaced audio cassettes as a home recording format yeah, properly. Yeah. But it never it never happened and it was a shame. I think because partly the quality of them is great. The 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 nice and small, so that, you know, if like you if like you're buying a lot, you, you, they're not taking up a load of room. Yeah. You know. When did when did uh, MP3s first come in though? Because I'm trying to remember. It's quite a while quite a long well, time ago uh, now. Yeah, MP3s um I would say late. I would say late nineties is when yeah. you got the sites like Napster that were that were starting to make make waves. I mean, I did. I didn't get fully connected onto the internet no. till year two thousand. No, so I'm no. only really speaking two thousand. But late, yeah. I would say. I would say late nineties was. Um, I'm just was, wondering whether that had like an effect really on on mini disc mm. as a whole because if you could just record something to a computer. And you got a final computer, a lot of people wouldn't be bothered. Yeah. You know, and it's better than a wave file, because obviously wave files mm. weren't that yeah. great quality. Yeah, Richard makes a fairly good point here that CDRs replaced the cassette. I think yeah, I think yeah. For, for re recording off a computer, you're absolutely right, because like I say, C D rewriters, be it like external ones or ones that were built into PCs. I mean the prices <laughs> were coming down in the two thousands. And yeah. um, you know, you could just go onto a website or some sort of application on the internet and get a load of music for free or very cheap. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, c I can't argue with that at all, really. No. Um, no. Yeah. Uh, Dale remembers um, Napster. Those were the days, and cassettes were, yeah, cassettes were virtually. But if you think about an audio cassette. I mean, you know, we. I suppose we were lucky. I certainly was, and by from what you said, Jason, you were as well. That when yeah. we were using audio cassettes for recording off the radio and things like that in the eighties into the early nineties, we did have some good equipment to use it on. If yeah. you think, I mean, I know we're going back to cassettes again, but if you think about it, a a lot of cassette equipment was the shits. Well, it just, mine, mine wasn't very great. Good. Yeah, mine wasn't I mean, great. You yourself, it sounds like you might have owned something that wasn't brilliant because you you mentioned about about tape snapping earlier. Yeah, well, it was say it was say show, and you know Dixon's own brand. Well, yeah, that's so um, you know yeah. it was. But yeah. for what it was, for what it was, which is I mean, if, you know, if, it, system, if it you was, were happy with it, then that yeah, was the main yeah, thing, really. Yeah, exactly. But, or, you know, if you want. The thing is, I mean, it's it's true for anything. If you want quality, you do have to pay a bit more. I mean, it's, as, yeah. it's as simple as that, really. It's not always what you want to do, but, you know. Yeah. But um, uh, just having a look at Richard's comment here about uh, Kazar's <coughs> viruses. Yeah. Um, oh, I remember Kazar, yeah. It's I, – I, I, I know the name. I don't think I ever used that. No, no. But, um, yeah, so um yeah, mini disc really by the time you were getting, you know, things like MP3 players and the iPod and things like that yeah. coming out in the two, in the mid 2000s then you know, mini disc it had a cut Sony and and whoever had tried to revive it a couple of times they introduced a thing called yeah. NetMD which was where you'd plug um, a USB lead from your mini disc into your computer and then you could record all your MP3s over onto a mini disc, and it would transfer all the track information and data over. Yeah, I think you can and, do and it the was, other way as well. well. Yeah, and that was a, that was a nice. I've never used I've never used NetMD, but it, I've seen demonstrations I, of it, and I it think looked, that's it looked a nice thing. But by that yeah. point, they were they were it, they were up against it because they were yeah. up against all the MP3 players that were coming out, and, and Apple were about to dominate the market yeah. because for the first time as well so yeah a little known yeah. story i know you i know you uh, know this because i've told you it before and you've even seen my, me do a video sort of on it 
the advertisement for mini disc over here, and I think it was must have been about 91, 92, right? Actually featured. I don't know if people remember the, the name uh, of a band called Reef. Yeah, most people know their song "Place Your Hands," but their first single Shalom. is featured. Is featured as the you got the guy skateboarding around, and he hits the mini disc with his skateboard and it bounces around. And anyway, it gets played in the studio, and Reef is sat there, and the bloke bloke likes it, and it's like, yeah, you know, it was. It, but it was just. Uh, I don't know if that's what got me into Reef or not. It might well have been just that advert alone. I just thought, oh, I really like that song. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, yeah, I, I remember you um, showing. I, I think I also saw that ad or a very similar one on a, on an old Techno video as well. Funnily yeah. enough, but I do I do definitely remember you showing it, Jason. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, it was um, it, there was an advertising campaign. I mean, obviously that was a Sony thing. Um, well, they were Sony to sign the any of Sony S two. You see, mm. but the, I don't think the stuff came out on mini disc, which is the weird thing about it. Yeah, so yeah. I do. We have a Reef album on mini disc. I'd, I'd occasionally look out. You, you did. You had. I think you had Glow. Uh, I had the one that came out around. It was two thousand, I think. Oh, maybe not then. So it might be the one after Glow. I right, think. So that was Rides. Right, yes, it is Rides. I've got Rides on yeah. on mini disc. That's only yeah. Reef I've got in my collection at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, that would I would have found that cheap on either eBay or Discogs years yeah, ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. The um, I don't know if you ever saw it, but the very first mini disc portable that came out, and I think it was the first mini disc device of any point of any type. It was it it wasn't very good actually. Like everything that came after was was really good. It was streamlined. Yeah. The first thing was like this sort of chunky black box, and they, it was just festooned with too many buttons, and it was one of those. It was one of those builds where it looked like something would go wrong because there was just too much happening and too many yeah. mechanical bits that could go wrong. And yeah, they're trying to be, uh, they're trying to be a bit too ambitious uh, with it, I think, by the sounds of it. Yeah, and then about a year later, they brought out like the the revised model, and it was like half the size. Well, it, it was slim, it, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, and another thing, another bad thing about the original one, the battery life was was appalling. It was something like forty minutes or something yeah. like they that. Were, they were quite expensive as well. Those, well, those... well, that's the, that's the thing. And you know, I said earlier. I, I mean, yeah. certainly in the early days, and I think for for pretty much all of Mini Disc lifespan, um, they were just over, they were just priced out of the market. Yeah. And, and for pre recorded Mini Discs as well, like. You know, if if you're going to Virgin Mega Store in 1997 and Oasis have just released Be Here Now, yeah, and yeah, you've got a CD player and you've got a mini disc player in your setup. You see the CD and it's what? What will it be? Like maybe 11.99, 12.99, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And right next to it is the mini disc version, same right. tracks, what, small, small case, obviously, but it's yeah. like 25 quid. I mean, what are you going to buy? Yeah, exactly. If you're sensible, you'll buy the CD. Yeah. I mean, I mean uh, if um, I wasn't into mini disc at that time, no. Like I said, it was something I got introduced to a little later on from from my friend. But um, you know, I but even if I had a mini disc player in my setup, I'd be like, well, I'm not paying double for the no, same. No, no, exactly. What's the point? For pretty much, pretty much identical audio, same or or pretty much as good quality. Yeah, tape, exactly. Make comparison with tape with tapes, but the thing about tapes, yeah, tapes are cheaper, and so, like I say, I've I've listened to some cassettes over the years, and even some quite recently, and on my setup particularly, they sound fantastic. But there was so much crap in relation to audio cassette equipment out. Yeah, like just junk. Just nasty stuff. I will say, I keep going back to cassettes, and I do apologise because I was trying to do <laughs> it's where we just focus on one thing. But if anyone ever wants to get back into cassette, please, please, please do not buy anything that's been manufactured in the modern in modern days. Yeah, they're awful. 
go go on eBay, do what I've done, and I've done it a couple of times now in relation to cassettes. So you know, my hit rate's hundred percent as well. Yeah. Look look for Sony. I would say you know if you're that worried about buying a lemon, just stick with Sony. Get yeah. something from about the late nineties or the early two thousands. Yeah. That Sony and that that maybe was considered think... more budget Sony back in the day. Yeah. But Budget Sony in 2000 is still about a hundred times better than anything yeah. that's manufactured. There are today. there are some. I mean, quite expensive now, but there are some quality kit bits of kit for tape, right? If you're willing to fork out the money. Yeah. But that's the thing; they are expensive. Well, it's a lot of it is you have to buy it on the aftermarket because it is still old stuff. There's, I think, the only. Yeah. The only what I would call major hi-fi manufacturer that's still yeah. doing tape decks now is I think TIAC or Tascam, yeah. and um, even even then the the bill because no one's making the mechanisms for cassettes no. to any good standard no. anymore. Even that, yeah, they're about as good as you can get. But a, they're too expensive, and b, something off eBay from 20, 25 years ago is going to be better anyway. It's going to be cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. And it's only from a brand like Sony, anyway. Oh, the, uh... if, I, if I ever find mini discs yeah. when, I, when I'm out and about, um, not... these days, not really. No, it, really, it, it's always it's always worth having a look in charity shops because well, pre-recorded mini discs, they're yeah, very sim they're very similar with the case and everything. They're very similar looking to cassettes. So yeah, if you know, you, you can go you can go on eBay. And if you look under certain mini disc listings, you'll see that the um, the account that's listed them uh, has been is a is actually a charity shop account who also sell on eBay. Yeah. Well, so, so charity shops they do get donated mini discs, and if you ever find a mini disc, especially one with its um, you know with its artwork and its case, yeah. and, and it, it's in a charity shop, buy it and then give yeah. them a little bit extra because chances yeah. are. You can be able to sell that on eBay yourself. Just to but, uh, uh, because because pre-recorded mini disc, it's a collector's market again, yeah. and they just like they're all worth a lot of money. There we are. Jason's got another prop for us. Arrow Smith Nine Lives. I got that for two quid in the Oxfam shop. That was about two or three years ago. But not but not with um... no case, unfortunately, no. But, but even, uh, even so, even that without its case, you'd probably yeah. you'd probably at least quadruple your money if you decide yeah. to sell that. Oh, well, two, 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 uh, yeah, I think it was something like that, two quid. Without the case, because because yeah. a lot of the hardcore mini disc um, aficionados, um, they'll they'd just if they buy that and then they they do a high quality printout, they'd they'd have like a bit of software where you yeah. can transform like a CD um, artwork into mini disc proportions. Yeah, uh, I've seen like I've seen videos on it on YouTube, and then you can you can you can now buy the original pre-recorded mini disc cases. Like some there's a company somewhere in this country, I think. Yeah, I've got to look those up actually. Yeah. So you could get that looking almost like you just yeah. you know, it was yeah. like a proper thing you'd picked up off a shop shelf. Well, I've got a decent printer anyway, so I've got laser jet. So you know. yeah. So yeah, so you could do that if you wanted to, but yeah, anybody, yeah. Even, even if you wanted to flog that just as it was, you'd still make a profit on it. Yeah, I could almost yeah. guarantee you. So yeah, any anyone out there watching, if you see anything and it's a mini disc in a charity shop or something, and because you know, chances are whoever's put that out ain't gonna really know what yeah. it is. I buy think... it because they're gonna be selling it for cheap, and oh. maybe give them a donation because yeah. you know it's it's a bit unfair. That like they're a charity shop and they're raising money for whatever. Yeah. But buy it, give give them a bit, bit extra, and then if you want to sell it on, then you're gonna make a good profit. I think I think if you if you see it for under five quid, I don't think you can go far wrong, <sighs> especially if it's got the case. And any anything that's a that's an original mini disc, original pre recorded mini disc. I've seen anything for like un, under a tenner. I'd be buying it just yeah, you know, even if I didn't want to keep it. Because it, it, yeah. it's that so people people pay through the nose for them. I've paid through the nose for a few of mine. Not yeah. I've got I've found some fairly good bargains, but the few and far between. That's that's why I don't really look for mini disc anymore. Because yeah. 
I feel like I've got everything on MD that came out that I wanted. And yeah, then the prices have just continued to, to rise on the second hand market. So didn't, um didn't Bjork release some re-release some of her albums on MD? I know no. she did tape for definite. No. She did multi-colored tape. Yeah, she, yeah, it was multicolored tapes, not mini disc though. No. Ah, okay. You know, um the 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 only major artist I can think of um who who released his album on mini disc and he also released it on eight track at the same time, funnily enough. Um, was the last Mark Ronson album? Oh right, yeah, yeah. You yeah that's that's the reason because and that's was... the only major artist who's who's yeah. done it. Fair enough. So um, yeah, um, oh, I mean mini disc. I, I love talking about MD. I could talk about. <laughs> it uh, I briefly mentioned about DCC. I mean, similar story, but yeah. even, even more of a sadder tale, really, because that really did die on its ass. Yeah, it did. Yeah, for years. Um, yeah, the sound quality was great, and some of the equipment, um, although a lot of it doesn't work now, but some of the equipment right. back in the day looked really nice as well. But um, it was. Um, by I think about a year or two later, it came out about ninety two. By ninety four, it was almost a dead duck. By then, really, mm. um, so yeah, that was DCC, and I've never used a digital compact cassette recorder right. or player or anything. Right. I'd lo I'd love to, but I'm I'm not risking paying loads of money for yeah something that might not even work properly, and then I've got to start collecting in that format as well, or trying yeah. to record on that format. Buying buying blank recordable DCCs, I think you need to be a bloody millionaire because there's so few of them still in existence. So yeah. they don't see much point really. But, I'm um, just wondering if my uh, my blank mini discs are worth anything much. If you blank, some of them, well, some of them are still sealed, never used. The, certainly the sealed ones, you'd you'd be able, you'd be able to sell. I've got, yeah. I've got a few that are still sealed, actually, that um, I bought just like they were bundled with all the equipment I bought. Yeah. Um, I, I do threaten <laughs> to use them because I, I, like, I like doing the compilations. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, 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 I've done a mini disc compilation of a lot of my vinyl singles, and it's just yeah. nice to put it on because it means, right, if I want to listen to all those singles I've got on 7-inch, like if I'm doing it as – as God intended, then I'm going to have to keep getting up every three minutes, changing the side. <laughs> yeah. and, oh, bloody, I've got to get up again. I've created a mini disc. I've, I've recorded it in LP1, which I think's a D, I think's got a decent bit rate. It doesn't sound like it sound, It still sounds high quality. LP2 is a bit ropey, I've heard, so I've never used that. But LP1, you get about an hour and what it an hour and 20 minutes worth of music yeah because normally most I of them is one super... seven and 12 inch singles on this one little mini disc mm. you stick it on it's great it's a lovely compilation was it was it about 96 something like that because i think cds were one to eight so i don't think it's far removed from that 96 sounds about right for for what sorry for the bit rate, for the look for the old, for the old, the old oh, I, 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 don't, I don't, I don't know the exact numbers for bit rates and stuff. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, that's something I don't really look into. Uh, I just yeah. tend to look and, and see what people say. If people say, oh, it's good, you know, this is a good, good, um, form to record in, then I yeah. will. And then a lot, of, uh, everyone I've seen who's said about LP2 has said, <laughs> long play two, that is, by the way, has said. Why? Um, that's so not very good. It starts to sound a little bit ropey. So yeah. I mainly use that for spoken word no. and stuff like that. The just saying, I don't know who probably put it up and said about the uh, MDs worth looking out for. Um, it's like anything else, right? It's it's worth whatever people are willing to pay for. If you want something that's a bit of a novelty that you haven't got in your collection, it's another good thing to have, right? Um. You know, buy what you at the end of the day, buy what you like, yeah. And if it happens to be worth a bit of money, just like to sell it later on. Any other format, I'd say buy what you like yeah. for mini disc. I'd say buy anything personally, yeah. Oh, fair what's, enough. Okay, what's cheap for a mini disc? Ten, ten pound and under, I would say. Maybe even getting on for 15 if it's one that's got its all its artwork and the cases intact yeah. and everything. So you between, know a lot more about it than I do. So. Fifteen pound, and then um, chances are, if you're buying something that's in that you know has got everything with it for that price, and yeah. you want to sell it, then you're going to sell it for a profit. 
Do the prices well, fluctuate much? Well, they've got they've gone up a lot. It's, it, it, they were they were high enough when I started collecting them about six yeah. or seven years ago. They're like even worse now. Yeah, but, so you know, well, there's but there is bargains to be fought. You you get lucky on eBay with all sorts that you don't expect to really if you're on it long enough. You know, it depends how much time you want to dedicate to it. Really, yeah, yeah, but, um, fair enough. Right, we'll move on to a, we'll move on to another format now. We'll move on to a format that's that's more Jason's era, the um, shellac record. <laughs> I don't think you well, really I'm those. I'm, I, no, I'd, I've not got much to say about this because I've, no, I've no. never used the shell, I've never played a shellac record. But no, well, I have got some. But talk about it for a little bit, Jason McCandy. It was, it was. I think when I when I started getting into music, it was sort of like on its pretty much on its way out. You know, mine was you know mine was the the forty fives and the thirty threes standard record. Um, what did they call it back then? Was it wax? Because a lot of people said wax. No, um, shellac. Um, no, no. I mean, I mean after shellac. You know, anyway, whatever it was. What you mean? What you mean? Like an early euphemism for vinyl? You mean? Yeah, I've had yeah. Wax used used in place yeah. of vinyl. I think I've done it yeah. myself before. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, the, the, yeah, the basic Probably another Americanism that I shouldn't really be using, Rob Walker. But yeah. um... <laughs> stop digging at him, leave the poor bugger alone. <laughs> <laughs> poor bugger, you should see him in uh, other people's live streams. He's always on a wind up. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> Oh, um, make me laugh because it's usually a bunch of yanks. Is um, yanks? Oh, right, right, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Of course, like, hey, I don't understand British humor. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's why it's ours. Um, <laughs> you know, no, but, no. You know, we're all good English people here, so we could yeah. all we could all take the piss. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. It, 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 yeah. I mean, Shalak. I I have I did pick up some at a car boot sale for free, right? But a lot of them got broken in trying to transport them home. They're mm. very very delicate. Very yeah, delicate. Little, aren't they? Yeah. You can you can sometimes get away with dropping it. Oh, I wouldn't recommend it, obviously. You can get start dropping a standard LP on the floor and it won't break. You no. get a, you can get a shellac one. Guarantee it a shower. Absolutely guarantee it. Right? Mm. Um yeah no it was it was I don't know really what was on seventy eight because all the stuff I found was sort of things like kids albums and storybook readings and stuff like that. So, I mean, obviously you had, uh, you probably had all the orchestral stuff. So Beethoven and Tchaikovsky and all that, oh, all yeah. that sort of thing. Um, maybe early jazz. I can't remember. Mm. I can't really, really remember what was, what was basically released anything. It. I think basically anything from like the, the first half of the 20th century. Is yeah. What yeah. On, on, uh, on shellac disc, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really. The book I was reading uh, up until a few weeks ago, I, I finished it. It's, it was good, although I've got a few problems with it, but it's not something I'll talk about today. Um, uh, the Story of Pop by Bob Stanley. Um, oh, yeah. I think he I've was heard of on it. about like, the early days of the of the ch uh, UK charts. And till I think pretty much into the early 60s, there was still as, as many singles being released on Shell Act <coughs> as there was on vinyl. Believe it or not, yeah, I should have asked. Him, I should have asked my dad because he would know better because he was born in 1947, and so a lot of the stuff. Was, was, like, the vinyl, the the vinyl record, LP, single, whatever. I mean, that was that was something that um, it started getting developed properly again after World War Two. So from yeah. like 1945, and then by the early 50s, it was ready for you know international marketing, etc. Yeah. Um, but you have to remember a lot of people, and there'll be people who are still coming out of rationing from the war and things like that. Exactly. In yeah. the early 50s, they're not going to be able to, they want to listen to music and buy music, but they're not going to be able to afford to upgrade from shell no. to vinyl right away. Yeah. So uh, a lot of a lot of singles and albums, I'm mainly talking about the singles because that's what I was reading about mostly, but they were still being released on, on Shellac 10 inch disc. Yeah. Um, quite a way yes, I was, I was ten inch. much into the early 1960s yeah. from what I was reading. Yeah, yeah, because I forgot it was 10 inch, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm. I think they're all I think they're always 10 inch. I don't think I've ever yeah, seen I think you're right. one. I could and I could be wrong there, and one day no. I may 
discover that that there were different size shellac discs, but yeah, um, I don't think yeah. so. Um, do, do you know what uh, shellac records, what shellac discs were made out of, Jason? Well, shellac, that's what it was. It was, um, it was like a slate style thing, wasn't it? Something like that. I can't remember exactly. No. What no, was it then? Shellac, shellac is the product that you get from um, the excretion of the lac bug. All right, okay. Black bug is a, well, it's a type of insect, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mainly, I think, I... Mainly Asia and Africa it, it, it's, is its habitat. And uh, although excretion sounds a bit unpleasant, uh, what I mean yes. by that is it, it excretes its shell. Yes. So the lac so bug, the actual... its shell, it gets gathered up by yeah. farmers yeah. and crop pickers, whoever it is, gets turned into shell. Oh, you, yeah. Bug. That's what your records are made out of. Yeah, now that you're yeah. saying that, that does actually ring a bell. Insect excretions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what were you on about with slate, Jason? <laughs> no, no, no. But it was that. It was. It was sort of. I think it's because what it reminded me of was a you know slate style thing. I don't. I don't know. But no, <laughs> no. You're saying about the, you know you're saying about the bugs. I do remember someone saying that to me as well. Um, in, in in Rochdale, yeah, there's, there's yeah. people around here. I, th I think they think the war's still on. Yeah, um, yeah. I think you've been asked a question by Richard there. Uh, what was uh, that then? An album that played at 16 revs per minute. I don't think I ever had that. No, I don't remember those at all. I, I've seen, I've seen them. Um, I never no. had one, but I've, I've seen them be demonstrated. I mean, there's not many record players that um you would be able to get that 16 well even even, semi, even 78s these days are difficult to play on a modern system now nah, well yeah it's not no. it's not impossible we, we talked you, you about, know. we talked a little bit about this yeah. didn't we, i think didn't we yeah we right. did yeah that's what i'm saying because you've said to me about it and they, again tech mode was saying right. how to play them properly yeah yeah tech mode's done a really good video on it that's like only a couple of weeks or so old at the moment yeah um Right, you know all those suitcase Crosley style turntables, which yeah. you know are, they're not very good, but pe but you know yeah. people people will spend the money on what they want. Really, I'm not I'm not really judging, yeah. but they always say you've, they've got three speeds, th um, thirty three. I think for me, thirty three, th forty five, and then seventy eight. Yeah. If you've got any 78s or shellac discs, 78s is commonly what they're called. Yeah. Even and, and you've got one of those um Crosley style record players, don't play your 78s on them because they're just oh. gonna sound like shit. Because yeah. grooves on a shellac disc on a 78 is so much wider, right? If you think if you think of my finger there as a stylus needle, and then my hand as a record groove, then that's how a record plays normally. Yeah. A normal vinyl record is look. It's touching. It's touching the sides. And yeah. It's going to the bottom. I think you can. How it just... and vibrates the side of the micro groove yeah. is how the music's getting transferred. But right now, you go to shellac record. It's like a clown's pocket. It's like your <laughs> <mom>. <laughs> And um, all it's um, and and uh, vinyl stylus, all yeah. it's doing is scraping along the bottom. It's not touching those sides. Look, yeah. So just just see. So that's why any seventy eight record that's not played with the correct equipment is going to sound like absolute glass. I, I believe I don't know I don't know about all players, right? But I believe you can buy seventy eight. What they call what the well they used to call it because a cartridge, didn't they? A seventy-eight stylus cartridge. Yeah. So I think you can get them. To you can. So, right, if you go on, I think it's Audio Technica's website. But yeah. Your thing is though, you've you've got. I mean, you've got to then have a record player, a good one, where you can swap the stylus and or the cartridge out. Yeah. Or a special seventy-eight thicker stylus. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You can't do that on a Crossley or a no, 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 you, yeah. piece of crap. Yeah. So, so you've got to make sure you've got the right equipment. That, uh, Audio Technica, I'm not, it feels like I'm, I'm becoming a spokesman yeah. for them now. Well, they, that's who I got my record player from, wasn't it? Yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got an Audio Technica as well. Not, not yeah. the one I'm about to mention, but it's another one they've got in the range. They've got one that's 
that's modern, you know, it's 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 got all you know what you'd currently want to have, yeah. but it has got seventy eight re- um, RPM speed on it, but you've still got to buy your start your seventy eight RPM stylus separately. Yeah. 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 You, you shouldn't use a vinyl stylus on Shellac Records. Is basically a long story. What cut. What would be the What would be the thing? Would it be? I know, obviously, it's the playing ability. Uh, would it do anything to the stylus? Would it do anything to damage the record if you tried? I don't. I don't think it damage your stylus. I would have thought it won't yeah. damage the record. It, but it won't set. It won't sound very good either. He robs off to make a mixtape. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's what I mean. Why don't you have a shake down at um, down at the drive-in while you're at it, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming. Thanks for coming in, mate. A malt, a malt shake as well. Yeah, a malt shake, whatever. <laughs> you drink, whatever all that is. Or a root beer. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, to answer that question, and uh, it probably doesn't do your shellac, your seventy eights much good. No. But also. It's not going to do. It's not if you've got a good stylus on a good yeah. record player. Don't put a shellac disc down uh, and think like you're just going to be able to play it. You need to swap your you need to swap your cartridge out and things yeah. like that. A lot of the old dance set type record players could play them. Um, yeah, yeah. Now that goes back a little bit to what I was saying about this sort of period between the fifties and the sixties, where some music systems were being. And actually, my mum were talking to me about it the other day, funnily enough, about um, about a music centre, like a big old hi-fi type thing that her dad, my grandfather, had in the yeah. early 60s. And um, it had a turntable platter, and it had um, it had a rotating stylus. And on so one side was your vinyl stylus. You yeah. rotate it, and then you've got your 78 stylus, which yeah. is... So I've never seen one of those in action before, but it's right. well, I had I had one. And then my mum said, "Oh, my dad, your granddad had, had one of them. So yeah. He was able to play both vinyl and um, and seventy eights on the one system. It was yeah. a rotating. I mean, she yeah. didn't. No, that's she, why. That's why I had one of my first record players. Yeah. So yeah, I think yeah, what Nick says about Dan Set players, which I know were really popular, particularly with like young people in the in the nineteen sixties. I bet some of the earlier ones are them. When Shellac was still selling just about enough, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them had the rotating, um, yeah. rotating um, head shell or whatever you'd call it on. So yeah, um, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised we've talked about um, 78s for so long. It's, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've got loads of memories, Jason. You've been there when they yeah. were invented and everything. So yeah. Yeah. wow, not quite, but yeah, not quite. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Um, yeah. but um, a format I think I know you wanted to talk about a little bit. Um, it's one I've never used, and uh, we did touch upon it very briefly, like yeah. ages ago. But I know you wanted to talk a little bit about reel to reel. So uh, yeah, yeah. Really- um, again, it's not you know never I've never owned anything on it. It was the it was the whole concept of the recording. This is you know. Um, and I, the one I had, I was given, I was given, I think it was my mum and my dad's. I wreck, I wrecked the heck out of it because I used it so much mm. for basically messing about on. It was a lovely silver and black thing, probably from, probably from the fifties, could well, well be. Mm. Um, and as it suggests, you had the, you took one end of the tape, you fed it through the, yeah. head, the playhead, put it through into the other thing and put a clip on there. A bit like what you did with the old city projectors as well. Right, yeah. except it was purely for audio. And yeah, we used to mess around with it and you had this little thing. Um I don't really know what it was called. I think it was it was basically to control the speeds, yeah, for yeah. playback. But you could also use it for recording. So you put it on as uh, there was two like little pins, depending on where you put it would depend on what speed you were recording at. So you could do, you could record your voices and play it back and it sounded like the Munchkins. Mm-hmm. I mean, stuff, I mean as, as a kid, that was funny as hell. Absolutely loved it, mm. you know, just messing around with it. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah and that was just, it was just doing that, just doing little radio my, skits. My friend, well, 
I'm going back to my college radio time again here, yeah, but yeah. my friend, he had a big, and it was like a proper, with the big 10-inch reels on it as well. well yeah, 20, like all the, all the, uh, all the synth bands ones. had. Like the, broad, like the broadcast standard ones. Yeah, like yeah, if, yeah. You call them there. Like, and uh, he'd, he'd record all these jingles and stuff on it because the sound was immaculate. And yeah. he could, and like, he used to do like characters and stuff. So yeah, if you yeah. wanted a character with a low voice, like, and I started getting into like making up characters for him. Yeah. So we'd record ourselves and then he'd slow it down. And then if we wanted yeah. characters with like a chip monkey kind of high pitched voice, yeah. Get up. Yeah, so that is really my only my only, and I never yeah. used it. I would just sort of sat there and watched him, and then if I needed to do any voices for him or, or read any script, then I would. Yeah. But he would be the one who'd be actually like you know using the device, using the machine. Yeah. But um, I always I always liked how it looked with the big reel going from. Yeah. The, yeah. Well, this was this was like in a little little case. You had a flip top sort of lid. So you get into it, and then you can when you're playing, you yeah. can shut it down. It all nice and compact. And, yeah, I know the sort. I know the sort of thing. There's yeah. some really nice ones that. Yeah. Um, I've, it's a shame I've it seen, broke. Um, I've seen Techmoan um, show a couple, uh, well, more than a couple, really, a few different reel-to-reel machines. He got a lovely Sony one from Japan yeah. a few years ago that that was a little bit like how you're you're saying, where it was sort of like you sat it on. It's probably yeah. might have been a bit bigger than the sort of thing you'd be using. I, mean, I think these were like something like a a five a, a three or five inch reel. I can't remember. Mm. Yeah, they, I weren't, think they was, weren't very big. It was a five inch one that that he'd got from Japan. It's a really nice yeah. Sony because he wants to get that particular model because he'd seen someone <laughs> on a Netflix show using it, yeah. so he wanted to get get one the same one he'd seen on that. And yeah. he's, he's shown he's shown he's got one in his setup like a great big. One like broad with the broadcast size reels, yeah. and and he's shown other ones as well on his on his channel. Ones that he's either had from years ago or ones that he's just had, you know, just to make a video about really, because that's that's what he does. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I I've not really got an awful lot to say about reel to reel from personal no. experience. Um, I know my dad used it before I was born. Um, apparently my mum threw out his reel-to-reel player because she just didn't like seeing it. She got fed up with him fiddling with it or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things I mean, that that's I what you did. I don't think he ever quite forgave her for that. That might be why he got divorced all those years. <laughs> <laughs> First no, thing to say. Probably, probably not. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> That'd well, be a bit um, petty, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, apparently my dad, he, he loved... Um, Real to real. I mean, once he got his Sony Hi Fi that, that um, you know, him and me and my brother, yeah, and even my mum to a small extent was using throughout the 80s and in, well into the 90s. I mean, real to real for me, dad would have certainly been superfluous as yeah. a pre recorded format. It's it never, yeah. it never caught no. on no, over no, no. here. Um, I think it did a little bit better in America. Um, I think it was maybe to send messages. It was fiddly. Yeah. It, it, some machines obviously wouldn't have like your auto spool and auto reverse no, and all that no. kind of stuff on it. Um, but no, it was it, a lot of it was it was you know it was sending stuff. You got friends abroad or whatever, because again, I, I can't remember when Real to Real came out. Um, but it's certainly been around for quite a long time. Mm. Um. And then it was a case of like, oh, you know, you got a friend that you might have met during the war, right, or whatever, and you're like, oh, yeah, I, I want to send them a message. So instead of writing a long blooming letter or whatever, you mm. get a tape, a tape. There you go. Yeah, send it exactly. off to them, they can play it. Yeah, I remember um, there's, there were those little. Um, you could buy like little little reel reels, little tape reels. Yeah, and the, and the box it came in. Actually, had room for you to write an address on. And I think it did. It. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you yeah bought one. You, you, right record, on that. Yeah. you recorded your message to your loved one who might have emigrated to Australia or Canada or yeah. wherever. You write your you write their address. You put a stamp on it. If you know, or or take it to a post office for them to put it one. Yeah. So yeah, that was uh, that was quite a. I wouldn't say. Overly commonplace because obviously you needed to know you needed to know people who lived in another country. Oh, I yeah, don't think yeah. anyone particularly bothered doing it from one British person to another because it's like 
you'd just, well, you'd just write a normal letter or maybe use the phone or something, wouldn't you? But yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe you did, you know. But it, for it's me, it's more like a kind of international yeah. thing, really. And for anything like my mum with with her letter writing used to be, it's like reams and reams and reams of the stuff, so yeah. it'd be easy to do on tape. Oh, Not you, that she well, did, yeah. But... In, yeah, in a way, you know, it's it's easier for some people, maybe and not for people like to hear your voice as well. Yeah, I, I think, that's the other thing. Yeah, if you, if you've got like family who've emigrated and yeah, and ducks, let's not forget back then international phone calls, no one would be able to really afford to do yeah. that. They would no. Whereas I think sent sending a little tape reel and buying a stamp, I mean that's not going to cost that much really. I even think inter- they're awfully, even no. internationally, I think international post was pretty reasonable back then for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, so you know, yeah. For that, it was, you know, it was ideal. Yeah, yeah. But well, I think really that's what it was aimed at, that, you know. Um, yeah, I think by the mid eighties, I think it was pretty much everyone just stopped releasing stuff on on reels. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, I think maybe albums from sort of like that kind of eighty three, eighty four period, like um, Thriller by Michael Jackson. Yeah. And can't slow down by Lionel Richie. They might have been some of the final albums to come out on reel to reel, as in yeah. like you know. And even then, I think in America, a lot of it was mail order only by that point. Yeah. Had well, you also Columbia House. Who, you also um, had um, eight track as well, didn't you? Well, I would not. I, I was. I was gonna say. Um, oh, sorry. One more. Yeah. Um, I know, I know. I said he's my co-host, but do you think he's like just trying to take over? <laughs> Should we try and swap? Can I swap sides here? Can you get be on the left so that people know you're more important than me now? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I've I've talked enough about a reel to reel. I think really, yeah. but yeah, eight eight track cartridges. There again, big in America. Didn't know much about. No. Um, Mark Ronson released his last album on eight track, although there was only yeah. about bloody fifty or a hundred of them available, and they got and they all got snapped up within about five minutes of pre order. Apparently, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, but of course yeah. they just collectors piece. I bet most people buying them weren't even able to play them. No, 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 no. Tecmo managed to get one, and he's able to play it because he's got every it form was, known. It was mainly it was mainly in cars though, wasn't it? You'd find it in your, your car stereo. It, yeah, in in, a, in America, so, not so much here. And do you know the no. reason? Do you know the reason for that? You did get you did get some cards with an eight track player here, but not not as many. The reason is, yeah, if you think about American cars. They're bigger. They've got a bit. They've got more space yeah. in them. And at the front, because if you think about an eight track, it's yeah. it's quite it's quite a chunky mechanism. So they've got really? to fit quite. A, they've got to fit quite a big. Mechanism at the front of your car. Yeah. Whereas um, over here in the UK and in Europe, well, we we generally drive smaller cars as yeah. a rule. Yeah, so true. we haven't really got the room in our cars in the nineteen seventies to put an eight track mechanism. mechanism I'm just trying to remember what the whether my dad my dad had a I couldn't even tell if it was American brand or not, but it was American styled car, um, a Zodiac. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if I'm trying to remember if that had an eight track in it or not. I think he might have swapped it out for something else. Mm. But yeah, um, yeah, it's it was a pop it was a popular format in America for cars and particularly for lorry drivers, truckers. Yeah. That's why if ever you go on eBay and you look for eight tracks and you see like someone selling like a bundle of like their old collection or whatever. You'll notice a lot of it is like, um, like nineteen seventies country, because yeah, that's what yeah. that's what American truckers were into. They just well, that, yeah, yeah, country yeah. Music folder. So get if they've got an eight track player in their in their truck in their cab, their their lorry, their truck, yeah, then uh, they just collect all the country stuff because that's what yeah. they're into. Yeah. So that's why you. That's why if you if you ever want to collect eight track, and I wouldn't recommend it because no. it's just so fiddly to like fix if because. Like they're old and like stuff disintegrates in them. But yes. if you want to collect eight tracks and you, but you want to do it on the cheap, you want to be collecting the country ones because they're the ones that are widely available and going yeah. cheap. So there you go. 
<laughs> that, that a tip for you there, Jason. Now you've got to rush off to eBay and buy a load of country and western eight tracks. After Yeehaw! The... Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, eight yeah. tracks. Um, I mean, um, similar, similar in tape to a lot of ways. I I didn't know for many years that you could actually no. record onto eight tracks. I know, you... I didn't know that. No. You can. Um, I yeah. keep mentioning him, but he has got all the formats ever. Techman's yeah. got an eight track recorder. It's a really nice looking thing as well. I've probably yeah, seen the video. Really use it. Yeah. And I would say buying a blank eight track now is probably like, you know, you've probably got a better chance of platinum piss. <laughs> yeah, I think he found one like 10 years ago when it was like a stupid amount of money. And like, yeah. you yeah. know, you might have got the last one still sealed in its wrapping in the world, probably. But yes. Um, and even and even then, in, in fact, what um there's a company on Bandcamp, um, I think they called them like Dead Media Tapes. They're the ones who actually worked with Mark Ronson for his eight track. What they do, yeah. they source old and broken eight track cartridges off eBay, you know, car boot sales, yeah. blah blah blah. And he and the guy who runs this little company, he's got like a special machine that can wipe all the all the music, all the information, the data off you, tape, yeah. track, tape, and then it's basically that. Then a blank one again, but it'll yeah. still need. It'll probably still need tarting up, so he needs to like put new, like a new shell on it, and yeah, you know, well, it's easy it enough to do with a and things like that. Yeah, easy enough to do with a three D printer. I well, I mean, I don't know how much how much three D printing is involved in it exactly, but it's. Yeah. It's this one guy who's got like, well, I say I've said a company, but really it's a one guy. Well, this is why maybe he's yeah doing it on um, and then he's and then like he gets like a few sort of indie artists who want to record stuff and he'll sell them on his band camp yeah. page. And, yeah, and then he was the one who helped Mark Ronson out with yeah. when he wanted his album on eight track, but yeah, I mean. Their eight track were really like you, you could say, as far as quality is concerned, it's like audio cassette times ten. Really, yeah, like yeah. If, if you haven't got if you haven't got the right sort of equipment, it's just going to sound like absolute crap. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which is Nick, fair enough. Nick's a truck driver. <laughs> Good for you, mate. Good for you. Well, some people like country. I right. myself aren't aren't very keen, but you know, odd bits I think I can tolerate like anything else. It's is. it's the more bluesy country that I like. Mm. You know, bluegrass as opposed to proper country music. Yeah. But yeah, yeah eight tracks. I had, I've never used one. Have no, not no. not got any interest in I, I I maybe like to use, you know, play one somewhere somehow just to say I've done it, but I've got yeah I've got no real desire. I've got no you know, I've got no kind of nostalgia for it for obvious reasons. So yeah, you know. So we're coming up on nearly five to ten. So Blimey. before we finish at around ten o'clock, I mean, you know, we've I think we've really got to at least make a passing mention to um, the format that really um, a lot of us are just always yeah. banging on about. I didn't realise it was that late, mate. Pardon? I didn't realise it was that late. No, no. Well, we've right. been uh, we've been discussing. And we, yeah. I mean, we spent on and I'll hold my hands up to that. But we spent t probably too long talking about bloody cassettes and <laughs> and why mixtapes weren't a thing or yes, they weren't yes. a thing, but we didn't call them that thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, come on, yeah. Records, final records. Let's records, just okay. finish off with, with a few few thoughts about them. Okay. Well, obviously, I've got back into. I had the phase where I was mainly CDs. But then, um, but I, I kept I, I kept a lot of mine because I had all the Adam and the Ants albums and stuff like that, and the singles. Um, well, you've seen I I I, I managed to uh, find my old XTC single, right? Bad and tatty as hell, but it does still play. Um, so I I had a lot of mine, and I would still collect stuff in the nineties because I was buying the CD, the tape, you know, seven inch, twelve inch picture disc. You know, I was a bit of a completist at the time. Not so much now, but you know, I did do that. Um, but no, I, 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 you know, I've always liked for, I always liked for, um, you know, records for want of a better term. Um, since I was a little kid, 
I think my, one of the first songs my mum ever played me was Mungo. Uh, was it Mungo Jerry? I can't remember now. No, um, Lieutenant Pigeon, Moldy Old Doe. That was it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was one of the first songs. Apparently, I was about two or three and jumping around the living room to it every time they put it on. So, uh, yeah, and I had a number of players over the years for everything from, from a little wooden box, little stereo with a, a, a clear plastic lid to one of the one of the old box ones. I, and again, I had the GPO Crossley equivalent and then this um, mm. Audio Technics, as you say. So, yeah, I mean, that's a brief history of mine. Yeah. In, yeah, interesting. Uh, Richard asked you if you if we mentioned the flexi disc. Well, you brought that as a prop. Uh, I mean, that would there we go. Uh, tell us what's on that flexi disc before. It's, it's a, well, you can't play it because it's creased as anything, but it's uh, it's some Christmas songs, I think. All oh, right, a Christmas yeah. flexi disc. It, it's um, how they used to do it because you you could you could get them in like a card and you send them off to somebody. With mm. the disc I, I remember getting getting one or two off um, Looking magazine in the yeah like, yeah uh, box I've got a uh, De La Soul single um, and that was on a flex disc but it was off um, Kellogg's Rice Krispies or something like that mm -hmm. so because you couldn't peel it off it's still got the cardboard of the, the box yeah. on there yeah so but, when yeah, it's a, so, yeah that's a sub genre. I, I'm not sure what exactly they'd be made of. Some sort of plastic, obviously, isn't it? But, well, yeah. I mean, it's it's you can almost yeah. Well, you can you can see through it. I can see the screen through it. Mm. It's that thin. It's it's you know. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's there's nothing to it. You mm. can cut it with a pair of and you know it's creased as anything. As I say, you can't play that anymore. Just to have to happen to have it around. I thought, oh yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm I'm not going to talk about vinyl records because I do that like two or three times a week on the, yeah. on the channel anyway. But it it would feel a bit unusual for us not to at least like give them the mention, it, yeah. mention at the end. Um, I spend way too much money on vinyl, but you do. All I have to do is tune into my records roundup and watch that for five minutes to realise yeah. that when I've paid <laughs> stu when I've paid stupid pounds and stupid pence for something from bloody. Greece or Austria, yeah. Yeah. or um, I've, I've ordered from some funny places like um, uh, Japan. I've, I've bought stuff from um, God, uh, Slovenia. I get uh, I have to get a lot of lieback stuff imported from Slovenia, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, all, I don't all, know. All kind of uh, Eastern European countries. Yeah. I try. I try and support all of my friends in the Eastern Bloc behind the uh, behind yeah. the Iron Curtain. As it well, was. I've I've got a lot of um, demo. Uh, well, not demo. Uh, white label releases, should we say? It has mm. got the band on it, so it's not strictly white label, but it, you know, promotional copies, stuff like that. Especially some of the early hip hop and stuff like Bomb the Bass and, and what have you. Because there used to be a shop down my way called Movement Records, and it used mm. to go all in, all there in the time for like hip hop and and house music and all the rest of it. That was really good. Um, I do miss, I do miss. All right, we, we're getting them back. We've got them back again in about the last ten years or so. But I, I, I you know, miss the the small independent record stores that you could go and buy the pre-owned stuff, right? Um, I've got no objection to buying pre-owned as long as it's in reasonable nick. Uh, okay, I have had some dodgy ones, but they're ones that are usually given to me, and they've definitely taken a beating over the years. Um, they play okay, mm. but the, 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 the covers are definitely ropey to say the least. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's just it's just um, I, I think I think I've really got back. You know, sort of like the last, you know. Ten years or so, so yeah, since I've known you. I think since, I, I started so, collecting records again after all this time. Yeah. Twenty nineteen, I think it was. Yeah, well, mine, um, mine's mainly since I've known you. Mm. You got me. You, got, I think you pretty much got me back into it again. Oh, I'm that influential. Oh, how great! Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, as I said, I did have. I'll wait, some, to, I'll I, wait I, to end with Jason finally admitting that um, I'm the greatest influence on his life. <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, all right then. Yeah. <laughs> And I think, that's, 
<laughs> yeah, I'm just a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, yeah you don't, you don't want to t follow in my footsteps in the money that I've been spending. No, I was going to say, yeah, you know, exactly. That's, I, I, but for me, I just, it's like it gets to be a bit of an addiction. I spent, I spent enough this month as it is anyway. Yeah, I probably spent about 130 quid on records this Ooh. month. Nice. Yeah, so you know, we'll see you high I, rolling I, for a change, Jason. I know well, what sometimes, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you've got to save up. I've got my Canada trips and everything to think about, and you know, all my comic book expeditions. Well, and yeah, no one wants to know about any of that crap, Jason. It's, <laughs> it's <a long> <laughs> <we're talking> <laughs> <laughs> and, and and the and the gigs though the gigs are the gigs are oh, well, yeah yeah I suppose I don't mind. I did go to I did go to see the Eels the other week. Yeah, I, so I spent I spent fifty quid on the crappiest signed record I've ever bought. It all the comes back to vinyl, exactly, exactly, yeah. Nick, exactly. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's I think going to do it for us because we've been at this for two hours now. Uh, yeah. I had a quick look um a minute ago as to what we're planning on talking about in two weeks' time. Uh, we won't give any spoilers out, and Jason uh, yes. forgot what we planned anyway. I, I think but I know, but I want to make sure. If you thought mixtapes and audio cassettes was controversial, I reckon we can oh, really... Oh, yes. I reckon we can really get some controversy going in oh, here in yes. two weeks' time. Uh, Jason remembers. So yes. I do hope that um, all of you who've joined us in the chat here, and anyone <laughs> who's watching on replay, of course, as well, that you'll yeah. be able to join us in two weeks at the same time, 8 p.m. for number three of the old Sodcast. It does promise to be a good one. Um, it's just going to be one um, that, um, well, I, I'll be able to have a few rants, certainly. So I'll, yes, I, yeah, I, I apologise in advance, but I'm kind and, of and not sorry. Cause... If, me and, if me and Jimmy have a bit of argy-bargy difference of opinion, don't be surprised. Uh, I'm, I'm just expect. I'm just expecting, <laughs> I'm just expecting to fall out with the chat uh, in two yeah, weeks. Like, yeah, yeah. I really offend some people, but you know, we'll um, we'll see. We'll. See. I know. I know one. At least you're going to mention. I know one. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but come back. Come back up in two weeks' time to yeah. find out what that is. And um, I want to say thank you for everyone who's contributed to the chat. Tonight, yeah. I want to say thanks to Jason, of course, for being a good co-host as always. I'll try. And, um, we'll both all be well. See you all in two weeks' time. So thank you very much, everybody. Goodbye. Ta-ra,